right, all right. We live, man. We live. <laughs> we are live. Yes, sir. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Oh, uh, yes, yes. So, yes, man. I'm glad to have you once again. Welcome, everybody, to Real Talk. Yes, sir. One D Thurston. We have real conversations with real people about real issues, and I'm excited about this next episode because we're gonna be talking about something heavy, something real. In all of our lives, most of our lives. Um, this is called, you know, hurting in the church, part yes. one. You know, hurting in the church, part one. You know, we've all been hurt in some way, shape, or form. You know, we've all fell off a bike. We've all jammed our finger. We've all, something has happened to us in so many ways. And we want to have that real conversation mm -hmm. of just hurting in the pews, hurting amongst believers. Hurting while we go into yes. church, hurting, getting hurt while we in church. But you know, before we do that, yes. um, just a, a simple introduction of myself. Um, I'm Dr. Antoine D. Thurston, and you know, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an author of My Abundance and My Freedom from the Mental Institution to the Pulpit. Um, it's about me going through uh, depression, low self esteem. Uh, mental illness, but God restoring me. And if you haven't gotten a copy yet, you can go to my webpage at AntoineDThurston.com. Um, it's on my Facebook page and my Instagram. You can get your copy of an ebook or paperback. Um, and also I have my friend here, Dr. Gerald Smith yes. Jr., who is yes, also sir. a counselor, certified counselor. Um, just introduce yourself, yes, my brother, who you are, what you do. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, uh, my brother. I God is amazing. Um, I just wanted to really just let everybody know, you know, um, Gerald Smith Jr., Dr. Gerald Smith Jr., I am, I'm an author of two books, Position of Prosper, Serving in the Kingdom, Framing Your World Against All Odds. Uh, I am a certified, board certified life coach, board certified uh, Christian counselor and a business consultant. Um, and then also on top of that, too, I lead a phenomenal group of people. Uh, and then we have a, it's entitled Life 360. It's a small group life enrichment class. Uh, and amongst other things that I'm doing, but that's just a little bit of, about me and who I am. And if you wanted to know more, you can follow me on social media. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Facebook. And then also, if you wanted to go to the website, you can go to www.eldergsj.com or you can go to my business site, which is www.soundmindcc.com as well. They're wonderful, man. Wonderful. Uh, so, you know, what we want to first do before we really talk about hurting in the church, we want to first, what is, you know, we both ministers, and I'm an elder, you're a pastor, you're a right. minister as well. Um, you know, we definitely first want to define what is the church? What is the church? Um um, you want to go first? Or you want yeah. me to go first? You, you want to go first? Uh, okay. Um, so when you do a yeah. Greek study of the word church, it has a secular meaning before it has a spiritual meaning. It actually right. means composed of two Greek words. I won't get too deep with it, but it literally was used in Athens in the first century. People that were in their homes, they had a person go throughout the streets making an announcement. Um, and they were, people would come out of their homes, literally, and come to a big congregation, about 6,000 people, and it wasn't in the building. It wasn't in the building at all. The building didn't exist for right. this type of amount of people. Um, this is where they would right. actually pray, make sacrifices. And then it had to have order. And in order, they would discuss uh, issues in the community, social issues. Right. They were elected officials. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it permeated every part of your life, these gatherings. They gathered yes. about 30 to 40 times a year. Uh, and they, you know, they also had Preachers, we call them well, we call them preachers, but they were called the Karuts, K E R U X. Right. Um, and we'll be getting the word Caruso preacher. So these preachers would preach and they would keep order. Anyone that was out of order, they'd correct them and they, they oversaw and over, would oversee these uh gatherings as well as well as a gathering. Um, and then they had a, elected officials and other leaders uh, within these assemblies and they had speakers and so forth. And then they also would do a benediction. Sounds very familiar. I know Jesus used that same formula or that same symbol of the of the church. People that come together that have come out of darkness into the marvelous light. The word ecclesia, e k ek, is where we get the word exit, right. um, to come out, to come out exactly. of something, yes. a transition. And so, um, mm -hmm. you know, so many of us have come out of darkness into the marvelous light, but we still hurt each other. 
Right. And so basically the church is a people that have come out of darkness into marvelous light, have answered the call. The second part of Ecclesia uh, is kaleo, which means call or to summon. Uh, remember, it's Absolutely. an invitation. So people that have accepted the invitation of Christ, accepted Christ in their life, and come out of darkness into his, into his marvelous light, and you are now the church. Amen. You are now the church. Amen. Anything you want to add to that or, 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 or add anything to that? No. I mean, it, it was it was spot on. Um, I mean, everything you said is, is definitely spot on regarding the church. Um, just adding, you know, talking about the Ecclesia. I love that part. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it is the church. But the mission of the church is to go forth and to make disciples. Right. To yes. go forth, make disciples, to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, yes. And that that is something that we are to do as the church we're talking about the church what is the church right and yeah. so the other thing to that is we come together under god in faith and love right mm -hmm. so we yeah. forsake not the assembling and we gather and we come together but the greater part of that uh i wanted to share and it really if you go over to i believe it's ephesians 4 it talks mm -hmm. about the ministry gifts it talks yeah. about the the apostle and the prophet the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, you know? Mm -hmm. So then the question comes when we talk about the church, why, why is it listed? How does this pertain to the church in Ephesians 4? And the mm -hmm. scripture says that it is for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. And then it is also to edify the body of Christ, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so ultimately it brings glory to Jesus. And so these are the things that we talk about with the church. And I wanted to add something, man, that really, really stood out to me. And that is, there are so many institutions on earth, established banks and, you know, just different institutions. But the church is the only institution that Jesus is coming back for. He's coming back for his church. Amen. And God has prepared a place for us to dwell with him, a prepared place for a prepared people. Yes, sir. That's wonderful. I love it. I love it, man. You know, and people don't understand that. He's only coming back for his bride. Only, but he's coming back for his girl. You're not coming back for his girlfriend. You're not coming back for his right. side chick. Jesus ain't got no side chick. He's coming back for a covenant people. People that have yes. come out into a real relationship with him. And we can dive deep yes. into that. Uh, and yes. so, you know, <laughs> but within every family, right? Even you know, even I, we have family, we have cousins, we got sisters and brothers. We get into yes, arguments. We, we get hurt by our family yes, members. Sir. So, you know, but yes, even, sir. you know, one thing about this, this, this original meaning of Ecclesia also I wanted to enlighten was the Athens really despise division. They didn't really allow it mm -hmm. in these gatherings of divisional isms. And so, you know, that's not the proper context in which the churches, modern day churches are ever supposed to be. We shouldn't have any schisms. We shouldn't have any isms. We right. shouldn't have any division and strife amongst us because that's not God's original plan. It wasn't God's original plan. Right. But we see it today. We see it now, now more than ever. And so, you know, the reason why we have this conversation, because, you know, uh, we had to talk about those that are hurting in the pews, right. hurting amongst the congregation, hurting amongst the yes. sheep. Uh, yes. You know, the book of Ezekiel 34, he talks about bad shepherds and then he talks about bad right. or fat sheep. And then you have skinny sheep that have been neglected, rejected, abused by either the shepherds or other sheep. Um, and yes. some people have really have been abused by other brothers oh, yes. and sisters. Um, and it has oh, yes. been atrocious. It has been atrocious. And some people don't want to come back. Oh, yes. They don't want a fellowship. They don't they want don't. to get an offering. They, they don't. don't have nothing to do with it. And so we yeah. want to deal with that in a proper manner as two ministers. Uh, and so I'll be, the first, I'll be the first victim in telling my testimony and what I went through. Um, yeah. And then you, you'll follow. Right. You know, we just interchangeably go back and forth. That's it. Um, and so That's my it. first experience, I think, with really being hurt in the church or amongst the church or amongst the people of God 
the major one, the major one, um, was um, when I found out mm -hmm. when my grandfather resigned and because of greed and the love of money, mm -hmm. other people came in uh, and ransacked the place. Other wow. individuals that had no affiliation with the church were there. Um, mm -hmm. there was, there was, I saw verbal abuse to the worst. I saw, yes, sir. Uh, I mean, people being talked to like they were children. Um, yes. To the point where you would think someone is probably psychotic. Um, uh, mm. I've seen people do a hostile takeover, uh, with the bank accounts, yes. changing the bank accounts, names, uh, yes. lying, constant manipulation, uh, Right. Even with leaders, uh, and I had got to the point where when I saw all of this, it hurt me so bad. I honestly stopped paying tithes. I stopped paying wow. tithes. Uh, I withheld wow. it for like a month and a half or so, maybe maybe two months or so. Um, and I was right. really fed up. And I'm sitting right. here looking at, watch this, my leader. You're preaching holiness to me. You're preaching the word of God to people. But yet my perception has changed about this person because what I've seen behind the scenes, you know, right. it's, it's hurtful when you're up there preaching about a God of love and a God of peace, but yet you can't have peace outside the pulpit. We got right. strife, we go on in arguments, we right. fighting over titles and positions and money, but we preaching about it. Right. You know, and mm. that, that really hurt mm. my spirit and my whole perception changed towards my leader to the point where I used to, well, at this moment in my life, I used to shake my leader's hand. And I used to greet them. But after this had happened, I stopped shaking their hand. Wow. I would see them, wow. even after church, I didn't, I didn't, I would see them and I would walk the other way. I would walk the other way because I was offended by what people and other folk were doing. And I was hurt. Right. Um, right. I had anger on the inside. I wanted to expose people. Um, I wanted to go on the right. internet like some people do today. Literally, I had information, and right. I could do it. And when I want to push that button to post my 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 uh, verdict on certain individuals, the Holy Spirit wasn't there. I just didn't have. There you people. go. And and and, and and it and it's it's something I have right now. I have family members that don't go to church because of what people have done in the name of Jesus, right. all in the name, in the of, name Jesus, of the Lord, all in the name of God. Right. So I understand the pain. I understand. Yeah. the pain. What is your experience? I so I've been in church uh, all of my life. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I've been preaching for 20 years. And I've experienced a little bit of everything, to be honest with you. Um, some of it, a lot of it directed towards me. And some of it, it wasn't directed towards me. But I still saw it. I witnessed it, right? Um, I mean, you know, just all types of, of different experiences from pastors, you know, and leaders, you know, hurting uh, or saying things and then lay members, you know, I mean, I've dealt with deception. I've dealt with lies, gossip, being ostracized, being made, you know, people trying to make fun of other people from the pulpit. I mean, the list goes on. And then yeah. you still, again, like you said, you have to be able to look these people in the face after. And, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, when you experience that, and I'll speak for me, it left me feeling hurt angry, frustrated, right? I was offended. Um, and then oftentimes I felt bewitched because I'm like, well, how can this be, right? Um, but the thing for me is I didn't allow any of those things to deter me from my walk and seeking God. And I didn't stop going to church. Some of those things I've listed as far as you know, the hurt and offense. I had to process that stuff. Like, yeah. that's not something you just wake up and it's gone because you said, yeah. 
you know, go away in the name of Jesus. No, like you, you're literally going to have to meditate on the scripture to where it becomes a part of you. But then you really have to do the internal work. God is not going to do that. Right. That soul realm is up to us. The mind, the will, the emotion. He's not doing that. We yeah. have to willfully do it because he it is our will that is involved. And so I had to willfully say I have to work on me and find out what is going on with me. Why am I reacting in the way that I'm reacting? Why am I thinking in the way that I'm thinking? And so for me, it was a process. I had to walk through it, right? And healing came as I went. You know, how the lepers, they were healed as they went. My healing came as I kept walking. But also in that, I had to realize that I also have to protect my peace, which means okay, I've seen things, things have been said to me, um, but it is it is not for me to internalize that, right? Because then that becomes a self-inflicted wound. So what, what I had to do was process it, right? And then after I processed it, I had to set proper boundaries so it wouldn't happen again. Mm -hmm. and, uh, wow. and and that is what, that's what helped me. Now, here's the other thing with that. When I say process, this is what I mean by process, right? I surrounded myself and I have people around me that I call a board of accountability, right? Mm -hmm. These are leaders that I trust and they have been proven and over a period of time in my life, right? They can be trusted, yeah? And then I've developed relationships with them. So I can, I can surround myself with them and I can speak with them at any moment about certain things and they will they will help me they'll pour into me they'll give me that wise counsel right um and, and that helped me to process you know um and then also too the other thing is i have a really good circle of friends so like mm -hmm. that's one thing i've realized in the body of christ is that we don't have friends and mind you all of you know the friends that are in my inner circle we've been friends for pr probably about 10 to 15 years and up, right? Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, they're involved in different areas of business. They're involved in different areas of the church. Um, but when we get together, we're able to laugh and have a good time and enjoy. Um, and so being able to have friends you can talk to that understand as well helped mm -hmm. me process this as well. And then the last piece for me um, is my family. And family provided me with a ministry life balance. Many times we hear a work life balance, but in this situation, it helped to give me a ministry life balance to where it wasn't all church, church, church. I was right. able to spend time with those who mattered the most. And so, you know, those three areas for me Although I, I've endured and seen a lot since I've been in church and even just preaching these last 20 years, um, mm -hmm. I've been able to process and to be able to walk through some things because <laughs> of the people and the things that I, that, I, that I put in my life that would help me to process that. Because a lot of people, when they get hurt, they, get, they go into isolation. And that's, yeah. the, that's the playground of the enemy. It is. Yes, sir. On the, on, the money, <laughs> on the money, man. And, and you know, when I was going through, yeah. I see a lot of things come to really test us where we are. Exactly. And show yes, us sir. what's really in us. And when stuff like that happens, if you're not mature enough to handle it, it's going to show you and reveal your right. immaturity. And some people... Though they've been hurt, they stay yes. hurt. They stay, they hurt. stay hurt. Oh my goodness! Listen, you just hit on something, brother. And, and, they and stay hurt. Yeah, yeah, they stay hurt. And and I and I'm I haven't written a book yet. I'm, I believe God is. I started it, but I'm not done yet. Um, and I talk about you know, I'm, I'm gonna talk about being the Holy Spirit tried to convicting me because I opened my book Bible up, right? And I, the moment it was Luke chapter six, verse 30, mm -hmm. 36, 33 through 38. Um, it says, mm -hmm. show mercy and, and you shall receive mercy. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. Absolutely. And then when the other Bible verse, when Jesus speaks about 
moving a mountain with faith. And then right after Jesus says, by faith, if you have faith, it must be, you can speak to this mountain, it'll be moved into the sea. And Jesus directly says right after, uh, if you come to God, forgive those that have offended you. But if you don't forgive, yes. God will not forgive you. And when I opened my book, that was right on the money where I went. And the Holy Spirit convicted me through the word of God, through scripture, that I had to forgive right. my leader. And I had to forgive other people right. that were in the, that offended me. Um, yes. And so when I began to do that, and let me tell you how I did it. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I didn't want to act nice. I didn't want to be nice. And so the first thing that right. came to my news, the Bible says, bless your enemy. Pray for them. I literally started right. praying for those individuals that did wrong. Yes. And then yes. I sent a text message and told them, have a beautiful, blessed day. And it did, I mean, it did something on the inside of me. I didn't want to do. But as I began to obey the word of God, the unforgiveness, right. the hurt and pain yes. disappeared. As I was obeying. And so many of us yeah, miss yeah. our healing because we don't want to obey the word when we don't feel like obeying. And some folks mm. still got bitterness and hate and anger against their leaders yes. and what has happened. They can't yes. be healed. So they can't shake their hand. They're not going to go yeah. to church. Anymore. They're not going to give the tithes because now everybody else is like that person. I know people it, right now that have exactly. been hurt by the church and think I'm like the person because they haven't been healed. So when you hurt, exactly. you filter everything through your pain. And so now right. every other preacher is a crook and a liar and he want money. Exactly. Because you've been tricked by one. True. Yeah. But because right. of unforgiveness, they're filtering right. it through their past experiences. And that's so powerful because it, it is it is it is literally like a cancer, right? Yeah. And it just eats away at you. You know, and people don't, re but you know, it, it's almost like the unforgiveness and offense are like twins. And if yes. you're not careful, it will literally erode and it will eat away at every area of your life if you're not careful. And one of the things that I've learned too is that there are some people in general, in the church and outside of the church, we, we say that, you know, they should be healed, but some of them don't want to be healed because if... <laughs> Here's the thing. This is where the victim mentality comes into play, where they are the victim. It is always them against me. They did this to me. He did this to me. She did this to me. But it's never them. They're never focusing on themselves. And that victim mentality, if you get healed, here's the other thing, then you won't get the amount of attention that you want from people. Exactly. See, a lot of times people want attention. And even if that means negative attention, bad attention, as long as they get attention, right? So some people don't want to be healed because they won't get the attention. They won't get what they want from other people because they won't be drawn into them, right? Mm -hmm. So some people have an opportunity to be healed, yes. but they choose not to be healed, right? And then some people know that healing is available to them but they don't know how to obtain the healing so they can move forward in life. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's powerful because you have both of those dy dynamics working inside and outside of the church, you know? Exactly. And, and so we have to make sure that, and we're not just telling people to get healed, but we're also giving them practical steps on how to walk it out. And I think that that's, I think that's essential. I think that's powerful because it's a lot of people um, who are dealing with so many different things and, you know, and, and they're just, they're just kind of going through the motions and they're smiling on the outside, but on the inside, they're hurting and they're angry and they're bitter, you know, it's just one of those things. And so, you know, again, that unforgiveness and the spirit of offense, it really is like a cancer. Definitely. You know, um, you know, it's funny because when you forgive a person, you don't forget it, but it don't sting like it used to sting. You know, you're not right. trying to get back at a person. You're not trying to get vengeance. Right. You're not trying to get back at a person. Correct. And, Correct. you know, and this goes for any anything that has happened. Some folk are really, they're really petty. Some folk will get, get offended over anything. Very. And, and I'm not talking to those individuals. 
you know, some people are easily offended by anything, but there are those that have yeah. really been hurt. And and Absolutely. so, like you said, there are those, I just actually spoke about what you said today, um, <clears throat> about some people, they like the attention of being hurt. And yes. I said today in a post I made, I said, um, mm -hmm. some people are emotionally handicapped because, Correct. you know, they, they, and see, when you're handicapped, there are certain things you can't do. Mm. When you're in the wheelchair, mm -hmm. you're paralyzed, you're handicapped. People have to push you, right? People have to do certain things for you. When you're emotionally handicapped, right. you can't do it for yourself, so you need other people to do it. You need no. other people to validate right. you. You need other people to push you. Right. But when you are no longer emotionally handicapped and you're emotionally capable, I don't depend on other people to give me joy and peace and to give me validation and to help me. But yes. also what I said was yes. most people that are emotionally handicapped is because they're in denial. And one of the reasons why they're in mm. denial is because now they have to be responsible for their behavior and take responsibility for, the, for not just what happened, but for changes. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I agree. And 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 here's the thing too, taking ownership. That's exactly what you just said. Taking ownership, right? So at the end of the day, what is it with it? what what are you doing that needs to change? Because if you really look at it, and this is something I've noticed down through the years, people love to see change on the outside, but they resist being changed on the inside. That's good. They That's love good. to see the seasons change. They love to see other people, oh, you got to do this, 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 and this. But when it comes time for them to change, they resist change. They want change, but they resist change because they don't want to be changed. And so a lot of people um, become uh, in this place where they become stuck, stagnant, and satisfied, right? And they, they, they're paralyzed. They can't move. They're not doing anything because they refuse to let go. They refuse to process the hurt. They refuse to... to, to, to do what it needs to do, what they need to take to get their healing back, to be healed. Um, and, and there are a lot of people who are in prayer lines and they're getting the miracle spring water and they're getting hands laid on them and they're getting oil and they're getting all this stuff. Right. And, 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 and all of the running around, the shouting and not against any of that stuff, the swaying, the crying, the worship. But at the end of the day, there are still a lot of people who are hurting and bitter and angry on the inside, and they're not getting results, and they're frustrated. And it's because they're not grabbing a hold to the principles of the word, right? And then also being able to know how to apply it to their life so they can not only get healed, but remain healed. Um, and, and something that I've learned, you said it was, you said this and it was powerful and that is you don't, you forgive, but you don't necessarily forget. Um, and what I, what I tell people and what I teach, um, you know, in my workshops and even in some of my sessions, coaching and counseling, I tell people, I say, listen, forgiveness does not mean reconciliation. God would love for all of us to, to, to reconcile. Right. But sure. there are some re relationships that it was for a specific season, even if yeah. it was just for you to learn your lesson. Exactly. And after you learn your lesson, you have to go on about your business. Um, mm -hmm. And so it doesn't always mean reconciliation. You can forgive someone and not reconcile, right? Yeah. God would love for us to reconcile, but all relationships, all relationships can't be saved. Sometimes the damage is done. And I posted earlier today, you know, study the consequences, right? Study the consequences before you make a decision. Wow. That's because some awesome. stuff you can't take back. You can't take it back. Certain words, if you're angry or upset or what have you, you can't take that back. It is like it is like trying to put toothpaste back in the tube. You cannot do it. The damage is already done. <laughs> So we have to be able to <laughs> forgive, right? Yes. But yes. also understand and really take an assessment to see, can we salvage this relationship, right? Yes. Is this going to be beneficial for both parties? And mm -hmm. if it is not, then it's okay to forgive and you have to move on. But the foundation is you have to forgive. And you can't just skip over it like it doesn't exist.
because trust me, it will come back to you again. <laughs> exactly. yes, different yes, person, yes. different circumstance, but it's going to come back. Or the same spirit. You never know how it's going to come back, but it will. It's a test. You never know. And You and, never know. And I, I agree with you 100%, man. It, it has to be applicable. So what are some ways yes. we can help people apply the word of God? Actually, I want to read Ezekiel 34. Through, sure. Um, um, 13 through 16, it says, I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. They, mm -hmm. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and they will feed in rich pasture on the mountains. I myself will tend to my sheep and have them lie down. Verse 16 says, I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. Yes. But the sleek yes. and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. I think so many times and what God is saying in this verse, there was a lot of corruption going on within right. Israel. And so many times we're looking for people to heal us instead of God. We're looking for people so good. to be that our source. So now God says, Excellent. I'm the source for my sheep. I'm the source. Not yes. Israel, not the people, not your, not your pastor, not the evangelist. People right. hurt people. We're going to hurt each other. But who's your source for healing? And God says, I'm going, to, I'm going to search the lost. I'm going to bring the strays back. I'm going to buy yes. the angel. And I'm going to strengthen the weak for what has happened. The question I have to ask some of us that have been church hurt or hurt within or hurting in the pews or by other believers, why are you still weak? Yes. Why are you still mm. walking around with a broken leg? God says, I can heal you and I will. Why are you still hurt? Like you said, sometimes, you know, we, we have to look Good at question. a different dynamic in a different way. But some of us, we want God to do everything, but we don't do our part. That's it. And like Jesus That's said, it. You can down. do you want to be healed? What is that's it? That's it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That scripture uh, came to mind when you said that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have anything anything else you'd like to add to that? Any solutions or remedies on how we can empower the people to know that you don't have to continue to be hurt or, or damaged? Right. You don't. Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't. And and you know, you said something about you know Jesus saying, "Hey, do you want to be healed?" Right. He asked. Um, you know, Jesus was literally the master psychologist. He knew how to reach people and he knew how to reach them right where they were. Uh, but he also understood the will of a person. He will never override his will. So I think that's powerful. But as, as far as, as solutions, um, there's a, a few things I'd like to share. Um, the first thing is, as far as, you mean solutions regarding healing, correct? Yes. Healing. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's a couple of things. So the first thing I, I would like to uh, talk about is <clears throat> for people to understand that there is no perfect church. Um, that to me is something that people need to really embrace and understand. There is no perfect church. It is the church, the, the, the location where we come together and we gather it is made up of flawed people who mm -hmm. serve and worship a, a perfect God. Okay. And so I think right off the bat, understanding that there is no perfect church. And then in some situations where people have had to leave other churches because of church hurt or because of integrity or because of, you know, any, um, you know, whatever other reason, uh, when you leave that church, Please have the right expectation and understand that the, it, the issues, the church, the church you came from and their issues may not exist in your new church, but your new church has a different set of issues that you may not know about. And so no matter where you go, you know, people are flawed and, you know, we all need a savior. Right. And so I think that's the first thing. The first thing is to understand that there is no perfect church. Now, you hit on this earlier, and this is one I wanted to share, um, and it's this, misplaced priorities. 
Yes. What I mean by that is the leader and the pastor is not an idol. Exactly. In exactly. this hour, <laughs> in this hour, priorities have been misplaced. Mm -hmm. And we're in the hour of, I am a celebrity. I am considered a giant in the gospel. I am this great prophet and this awesome evangelist and this world-renowned teacher, right? But at the end of the day, and then we have all these social media sensations. I can't even leave that off, right? Exactly. Social media sensations, who has the most followers and the most likes, you know? Um, and and, and, and it, this is spreading like wildfire, right? Exactly. But many people are hurt when leaders are prone to errors and issues. And it is extremely dangerous when you elevate men and women where it seems like we deify them, right? Your pastor, your leader, they may be anointed from on high and used yeah. of God. You should mm -hmm. honor them, respect them, hold them in high esteem, but they are still human. So we have to make sure that we are not I idolizing our leaders and making them idols in our lives by putting them in the place that belongs to God. So we have to make sure, and I think some of this will help with our healing. It will help with our healing. And then another thing I wanted to, to mention, which is near and dear to me, <laughs> is, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times people feel just, you know, prayer, I believe in it. I believe in prophecy. I believe in prayer. Prayer is dynamic in its working. Listen, prayer is my lifeline, right? But at the end of the day, we're in the hour now where just telling someone to go pray and send them on their way, that's not going to necessarily work in this hour. So right. we need prayer, Make it we're gonna, and, and but we're going to need to add in them yeah, in the place that belongs to God. Right. So we have to make sure, and I think some of this will help New world. with our healing. Okay, go ahead. I'm talking about that, brother. Yes, sir. Not a problem. <laughs> so the other thing I was going to say is that we need to be able to have prayer, but we need some other practical steps, right? Exactly. We have prophecy. And here's the other thing that you said earlier, and I just want to share this because everybody is crazed over the accurate prophetic word. I come from an apostolic and prophetic house, so I get it. I get it. You know, I was brought up in it. But at the end of the day, you can prophesy, be accurate, and still be emotionally unstable. Exactly. Amen. And so it it is it is essential for us to be able to, a part of our healing, sit down with someone who is licensed, someone who is a certified counselor, psychologist psychotherapist, psychiatrist, someone who is qualified, right? Maybe a lay counselor within your church, but someone who is qualified, a mental health professional, right? That provides a safe space so we can work through what's going on internally with us. And this is the part a lot of people in church don't want to hear um, because uh, many times people have trust issues. Right. Exactly. From the pulpit to the door, they have yeah. trust issues and we have people bleeding in the pews. And we also have leaders bleeding from the pulpit on the people. Exactly. So but both parties are bleeding. But a lot of times it's, it's you don't have to bleed on people or bleed unnecessarily if you find someone who creates a safe space where you can share and you can talk through what is going on. So we have to find a professional or a leader who exhibits a high standard of ethics and will hold your information confidential, okay? And that is essential because it's it's a lot of, I don't trust in the, in, in the church and outside of the church, but especially in the church. I don't trust, it, you know, this and that. Okay, no problem but we need you to find somebody exactly. that you can trust. And legally, they have to hold your information confidential. And, 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 and down through the years, we have been taught 
to ignore how we feel and to suppress it and keep going. Just keep going, just keep going, just keep going, right? But this actually does more damage than good because your emotions are volcanic in nature and they will erupt at the most inopportune time. Trust me, they will erupt and it will happen when you least expect it. It will happen when you don't want it to happen. I always use the analogy of shoving stuff in that closet in your home, it's a coat closet, but you just keep putting stuff in there as you come in the house. And now you have this wonderful dinner party. You have your friends over, you have people over, you're having a good time. And there's so much stuff in that closet that all of it just comes out and everybody sees everything that you shoved in that closet is now all over the hallway. It is now all over you know, the front part of your home or wherever the closet is. Now you have to go and clean it up. That's what happens with our emotions. We suppress it long enough, we are going to explode. We're going to erupt. And it's not going to be pretty because it's coming at the most inopportune time. Um, and, and, and then, you know, as we're talking, this just came to me that, you know, sometimes sitting with someone, right? A lot of people don't want to do it. But sitting with someone provides another perspective on your situation and it breaks your thought pattern and it breaks your, your cycle of how you think. And many times we get caught in our own thinking pattern, right? Our own cycle. And, and it needs to be interrupted to help bring about change. And so, I mean, I, I know I said a lot, but I think, you know, all those different points will help uh, to be a solution or help to provide healing for those who are in the church who have been wounded. And I will say this, if you are in a church and you are, uh, it's a lot of spiritual abuse or emotional abuse or whatever it is you're dealing with, if it is something that is going against integrity, if it is something and you know it's not right, don't stay. You need to pray and ask God where you need to go, but you need to remove yourself, right? And when you remove yourself, don't down the church that you came from because someone may need the word that's in that pastor's mouth. You just go quietly and you move on and you seek your healing, right? But we have to make sure that we don't stay in a place and we know that we should be moving on because we don't agree with what's happening. Don't bash them because, you know, the law of sowing and reaping, it, it remains. It's just like seed time and harvest, seed time and harvest, the law of sowing and reaping. So if you leave and you, and you run the ministry down and you do all these different types of things, Trust me, it's going to come back to you. And that's why I'm glad when you wanted to expose and you wanted to put that out there on social media, the Holy yeah. Spirit put a halt to it and told you to stop because you would then reap from something that you did. You felt good in the moment, but the consequences from that would have been great. And I want to say this, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, it is surveys have, have shown that when a person is hurt, even psychologists, uh, have shown that when a person is hurt and you keep that stuff bottled up yes, um, and you mask it as anger, sometimes we see anger as the root. Anger is not really the root. Anger is really a symptom of mm -hmm. pain and hurt. But when you when you don't yeah. deal with the hurt, you're masking it as anger and it becomes vengeance. And so what they found was when you harbor pain on the inside, it can it can explode as anger. It can you can start to become a delinquent. You have delinquent behavior, yes. um, vengeance, yes. and also psychosomatic um, symptoms, which basically means uh, what's going on the inside internally manifests itself externally in sickness. Let me tell you again. Absolute. In headache, in, Absolute. Headache, in cardiovascular diseases, car heart attacks, ulcers, yes. ulcers yes. which are sores, internal sores on the inside of a person's body, in your intestines, sores. Some of us yes. have sores, not because of the devil or demon or, or the enemy, but some of us have right. sores, physical deficiencies going on with our body yes. because we refuse to forgive. Yes. That's what yes. hurts unresolved, unrelated so pain does to the physical body and the neurological system. Yes. It wears yes. it down. They have even found that some it does. bitterness can be traced to uh, the root of cancer. Some of it can be traced to bitterness and unforgiveness. And so yeah, when we keep it is, it all is. this this hate and pain, 
it releases all these negative uh, um, feelings and, and, and so forth within our body, yes. neurologically and biologically. And some of us, we go into the, to right. the altar, prayer, but you won't deal with the hurt. And so you, you got prayed for, but the headaches did it. And some of us, you got right. to get rid of the headache. You got to deal with the hurt. You want to deal with the mm-hmm. sores, you got to deal with the hurt. You want to deal with the behavior, right. you got to deal with the root. And some of us, we just want God to take away the behavior and change our behavior, but we don't want God right. to show us what's hurting us. And until you re- you exactly. reveal the root, the symptoms will remain. And some of us will be taking right. prescriptions and drugs and we're trying to do all these shouting over symptoms, but you're not dealing with the root. Shouting over it is not going to deal, deal with the root. You have to deal with the root. No, it's not. And like you said, I agree with you. You need to want to talk to me. You know, and, and I love what you said. That's so powerful. That's why these, these conversations are uh, vital and essential. Because a lot of times, too, what people, uh, it is learned behavior, right? Yes. And so what they've seen their mother or their father do, that, that's been in them all of their lives. And so some of them yes. don't want to unlearn, <clears throat> right? Yeah. Yep. They don't want to unlearn because it's attached to the person that they love. And a lot of people seem you to know, think uh, that... Uh, 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 it, mm-hmm. Anissa says, give him your hurt. I agree with that, but to some degree I don't. Because some of us, we want to give God everything, but we don't want to do anything on our own. That's right. Because there are some things I have to deal to. with. I have to work on. Even my anger. Yes, you do. Anger is an emotion that God is not going to take away from you. God gives you the ability to manage your anger. There you go. There you go. God gave all of us a sex drive. He's not going to take that sex drive away from you. No, God Absolutely. wants you to manage the sex drive. God wants. Yes. He gave us the ability Absolutely. to become sad. That's an emotion. But God wants us to be able to properly manage and effectively use it. The problem is some of us yes. be asking God to take everything away. But God says, I don't need to take it away. You just need to know, know how to use it and manage it. Exactly. Amen. And some, that's something and that's, we have not yet learned. And so we put everything on the altar. God says, take that altar altar because mm-hmm. I'm not taking it. I'm not taking it. Exactly. Some of it, and see, what it, do, what it does is it creates lazy Christians. It yes, creates a generation of lazy Christians where we want to put all the responsibility on God. And it doesn't all belong to him, okay? When you do your part, God will always do the rest. And so, you know, well, if I just give it to God, then he'll work it out and he'll do this for me. And then, you know, four, five months, a year, two years later, they're saying, well, God, I've been decreeing your word. I've been speaking your word. I've been doing this and it's not working for me. It's not doing, because there are some things that you have to do, right? You have to put, you know, there's a scripture that says, you know, if if your eye offend thee, pluck it out. Yes. <laughs> if, 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 if if your hand offend thee, cut it off. Mm-hmm. Well, God's not telling you to, to physically put your hand in your eye and pluck out your eye or go and cut off your hand. What he's saying yeah. is there's some stuff you're going to have to cut off. You're going to have to put it off of you. God is not going to do everything. And when you begin <laughs> to take the steps to walk out for your healing, and your development and your growth, God then will come in, strengthen you and empower you to continue to walk away from it. But there's some things we are going to have to do and we're going to have to take ownership. We're going to have to take that mirror and we're going to have to look at ourselves and see ourselves for what we are, who we are and ask God to work in us to make us better. If we can't do that, you are not going to grow and you will remain remedial. You will stay remedial and your growth will be stunted because you refuse to learn the lesson. And some people remain hurt because yeah. they refuse to learn the lesson. And instead of 11 day journey, they'll stay where they are for 40 years and they'll die right where they are unless they change their mind to say, you know what? I can stay here. I got to work yeah. on me so I can be better. This is so good. I can talk all day. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this. We'll, 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 we'll cut it off in a minute. But I had I, I put a post. I said I was doing a revival years ago. And one of the guys got up, came to the altar. And he said, pray mm-hmm. for me because I need God to renew my mind. 
And I said, God is not going to do that for you. That's something you got to do. God will save you. You have to forgive your sins. Right. But the changing of the mind is your responsibility. He gives us the Holy Spirit. First, second, chapter one, three says, mm -hmm. God has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Meaning he has equipped us with everything we need to live a victorious life. You know, it's like joining, Paul Absolutely. even spoke about the armor of God and warfare. He says, put on the whole armor of God. That means the armor is available. I played Little League football. I had yeah. to put on the helmet, but they gave me the helmet. Now, either yeah. I could put it on or I could not put it on. Now, if I don't put it Absolutely. on, we'll get hurt. But some of us, we want God to put the helmet on us. We want God to put right. the, the, the breastplate on. We want God to put the shoes on. We want God to do everything. God ain't Absolutely. doing anything. God says, I've enlisted you in my arm. I've saved you. Yes. I've forgiven you. Now you take my word and you apply it so you can see the power, my power, surge yes. and change you even more. It's a twofold. Absolutely. It's twofold. God is looking for partners, not projects. I'm saying, yeah, God is looking there for partners, not projects. And some of us, we just want God to work on us, but we don't want to help God work on us. Mm hmm. Listen, I, I, I love that. I just I, I was going to share something. You said something that triggered earlier and I just kind of got lost in the sauce as far as <laughs> me sharing mm -hmm. it. But I just want to piggyback off of what you said. And one of the other reasons why people continue to be hurt is mm -hmm. because they're looking. Many people are expecting the church to meet their every need in their personal life. And that is that becomes a problem because all of us have primal needs. We have primal human needs and, and, and those needs need to be satisfied, satisfied in our personal lives. And what I mean by that is this. Like for example, we have the need for control and security to be to feel safe. Right. We also have that human need for meaning and purpose in life. What what is my meaning and what is my purpose? Right. And then uh, another example would be the need to give and receive attention, okay? And so all of these are basic human needs. And when we come to the church, some people expect the church to meet their needs. And what happens is, right, when we lack in one area of our life, we overcompensate in another area and it creates an imbalance. So we have to make sure that our needs are met Right. And when I say needs, again, it's the examples that I kind of put out there. You know, it's about 12 of them, but I just wanted to give three and and, and it has to be met. So if it's not being met, then we're going to seek it from the church. Now, you're going to meet people. You may meet lifelong friends in the church that become family or what have you. But you have to make sure that your basic needs are met. Right. So for me, what helped with my healing? was making sure I had that board of accountability, making sure I was around my family and making sure that I spent time with my friends. That's, you know, my close circle that helped me. Hey, that serves a need that is serving to give and to receive attention. That is a need that is being met in my life. If I don't have that, then I'm going to look to the church or look to other people. Right. And while I'm looking for them to fulfill it, they may not have the capacity to give you what you need. Exactly. So we have to make sure that our human needs are met and that we are not uh, we don't have unrealistic expectations from the church to meet our every single need. I, I completely agree. I completely agree. Uh, brother, we have had a dynamic conversation discussion. Absolutely. I love it. And, and you know, I want to just piggyback off what you said and we'll, we'll end it. <clears throat> Psychologists did a study sure. and call it, um, say one of the reasons why people really don't change was commitment. They're just not willing to commit to the process. And one of the other reasons was they had unrealistic expectations of change. They may see a little change, but they, because they don't commit to it, they don't see long lasting change. And the same thing with God. And like you just said, we have some unrealistic expectations of God. Some of us have unrealistic expectations of each other. And lastly, some of us, we're just not committed to the process. And until we are intentional right. about being committed to the process of applying his word on a continuous basis, regardless of the results, you know, we're not going to see that long lasting healing change and maturity like we desire. Uh, brother, I enjoyed you. 
Uh, this was this dynamic. So good. I enjoyed you. Thank you. We're gonna do this again. <laughs> We're gonna do this again. But man, yes, let's do it um, soon, please. Definitely, brother. This was fantastic. All the people enjoyed it. Uh, uh, man, we're going to do this again. <laughs> this was impactful. <laughs> this was needed. This was needed. Um, um, yes. And we're just thankful. we just thankful, man. Anything else you want to say before we yes. end this broadcast? No. I just, you know, uh, I just want to say I pray that somebody was blessed, um, you know, hurting in the pews, hurting in the church. Mm -hmm. It is real. Uh, corporate yeah. America, it doesn't matter. You know, when you're yeah. hurt, you're hurt. And exactly. we have to take ownership, um, you know, and be able to process that hurt. So, you know, I, I just pray that something was said between the both of us that would help to change somebody's life, to help promote healing. Exactly. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to end it with a prayer for the people. Sure. You can pray for the people. Sure. Absolutely. Father, Wait. in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you for this time, Father. Father, I pray, Father, that something was said that would help change the trajectory of somebody's life that was listening on today, tonight, during the day, whenever they're watching this. I pray that something was said that would help to promote healing and that they will see themselves, but don't just see themselves where they are, but see themselves in the future, see themselves healed and, and walking in their healing. That way they can become greater. Father, I pray that you would keep each and every person covered. And I pray, Father, that you will continue to give wisdom, insight, knowledge, understanding, and revelation, Father, that we can live for you. And that when people come in contact with us, they come in contact with God and they come in contact with the church. I pray that you do it now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen, my brother. Thank you, everybody, for joining Real Talk. Yeah, real conversation with real people about real issues. Bless you. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. God bless. Good night.